A few sections ago, we talked about exponential expressions and exponential equations and functions. Now, when we did this, for exponentials, this is what we saw. We saw something that was of the form y is equal to a to the x. And we made certain restrictions on this. We said that a has to be uh, positive and a cannot equal 1. Well, now we're going to see how that compares and how we end up with a logarithm. So we said that exponentials were 1 to 1, which means they have an inverse. And their inverse happens to be the logarithm, or more commonly referred to as log. And if it's an inverse, that means you swap out the x's and the y's, so it gives you this expression. x is equal to a to the y. We still have those restrictions that that base has to be positive, but not equal to 1. Now, the problem that we have here is that x equals a to the y. That's just kind of weird. So we kind of rewrite this to be from the perspective of y. That way we can then go to function notation later. And so what we do is that we kind of rewrite this, and we say that y equals log base a of x. Now, I know it sounds weird and it sounds crazy, but it doesn't have to be. Let me give you an example of how we make the connection between exponentials, logarithms, and also radicals, because everything is connected, okay? And as long as you understand powers, we're going to be okay here. So here's what I want you to think about. If I say 2 to the fifth power, we know what that expression means, and we can calculate that, and 2 to the fifth power is 32, right? We know that, there, that that's how the expression works, and you know, 2 to the 5th is only going to equal 32. Well, let's think about how we ask a question related to this using radicals. So, using radicals, we would say this. We would say, what is the 5th root of 32? And when we ask for the 5th root of 32, what we're asking for is something to the fifth power equals 32. So when you have a radical, you know the answer, 32. You know the power given by the index, which is 5. You're looking for the base. So the base is 2. When we deal with radicals, you're looking for the base. When you're dealing with exponentials, you're looking for something else. So, no, not exponential, but for a logarithm, excuse me, you're looking for something else. So a logarithm is going to ask this question, log base 2 of 32. So when you're dealing with a logarithm, you are not trying to find the base like you are with a radical. You're not trying to find the answer like you are when you're just evaluating, evaluating with an exponent. You're trying to find the power. What's the power of 2 that gives us 32? And we already know the answer. The power is 5. So the key thing here is that the answer to the logarithm is the power. The answer to the log is the power. And as long as we know that and we remember that, we won't have any problems. Now this is another section, of course I really like this because it deals with powers, but it's another section where you need to have your power sheet. Have that power sheet right next to you. That way when I ask you questions, you don't have to scratch your head about you know what's the right power because the power is going to be on the power sheet right there. So if I ask you this, I say, what is log base 5 of 125? The answer to the log is the power. Now, understand what the different parts are. This is your base. Just like up here, that 2 is your base. Of course, the answer to the radical was the base. But the 2 is the base for the exponential. 2 is the base for the logarithm. So you know what you're working with. So in this problem, the base is 5. So think about 5s. The answer to the log is the power. So the question you're trying to ask yourself is 5 to what power would give me 125? 
That's the question we're trying to answer. Again, if you know your powers, you know that the answer here is going to be 3. Okay? So, a lot of times what we do for these expressions is that instead of writing the question mark, we might come over here to the side and actually write the equation and say, okay, 5 to some power, we don't know, so let's call that x, is equal to 125. And so what you do is that you get out of this realm of logarithms and you go back to something that you may be more comfortable with, which would be exponential equations. And remembering what we saw with exponential equations a few videos ago, if we can write each side of the equation with the same base, we're in good shape. So 125 we know is 5 to the third. And since these guys here have the same base, that means that those powers must be equal, so x equals 3. Well, that's what we already had here, right? This is just how you work with, with logarithms, okay? So what we're going to see in the next video is we're going to do some more examples, some more complicated examples. We're going to work through all the different variations that we have with these logarithms, and it's really not going to be that bad. For the most part, we're going to be rewriting these guys as exponential equations, and if we do that, we're going to be home free.